Hello and welcome back to Station Is. I'm Mick and today we'll be having a bit of a look at the latest farming update. Well, it's a bit of a belated look at the farming update because the devs have actually put out another update since before I've had a chance to look at this one. So they've got a bit of a trade update out as well. well there's not much in the trade update. As far as I can tell, there is only the uh, landing pad in there as far as I can tell. Um, but I guess that's a fair bit of a change there. So they want to get a bit of the groundwork in before going too far. But this one's about the farming update. Uh, plants grow quite slowly now, so it takes a little while to test it all out. And as part of this, we have all of these thingies here. Uh, so we've got our new plant genetics up and running. And Harveys are up and running as well. They're doing their job. They're functioning again. So no more manual gardening. Yay! Right, so what we've got out of this one is, uh, when you're ready, Harvey, uh, we have got our genetics. Now, the first, first farming update was place, putting down the groundwork, and um, second one is a few updates. The third one has got the real guts of the update here. Now, uh, kind, of, kind of after the first one there, you sort of think we've got sort of genetic properties of all the plants there, and they mutate, and... Uh, I've not got the time to be doing that. That's just going to take forever to just wait for plants to randomly mutate and do their stuff. But, but oh ye of little faith, there was a grander plan, and that's these devices here. Um, boop. And before you panic and say, that on-off switch is in the wrong colour. That's actually on the side there. It is the right colour. Don't panic. Uh, it took me a little while to find it. After a massive OCD problem. Um, yeah, don't, don't worry. Uh, now we have our little analyzer that we had from the last one. We have our analyzer gun from the first one. They're still here. But we have now got the genetic splicer. We have the stabilizer or destabilizer, whichever mode you've got it in. And you've got a little uh, sample tray here. I probably think this is a really, really handy part of it all. Just something as simple as a sample tray. Because uh, I thought trying to sort out all your stuff on the floor the way you meant to is just going to be terrible trying to keep everything in order you see if you've got lots of tests running with different plants doing different things there how the hell are you going to sort them all out and know which one's which uh well this is actually very clever a little sample tray where you can just uh, drop stuff in um and it's pretty easy so if you've got a stack of stuff there you can just uh boop 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 they're in keep them all ordered know what you're doing so that is really cool yeah, keep the place nice and tidy now. Uh, and a really, really cool thing is if once you name, name the actual uh, devices there, the seeds will keep the names of those devices. Uh, so hydroponics device 22. Um, so I know that that one came out of here. So whatever test I was running on that one, whether it's a, a heat treat where I'm trying to get them to grow in hot temperatures or whatever, yeah, I can just name it. Sort of say it's a, it's a, it's a potato seed from heat, heat torture device number one. And then when I sort them all out, I can just sort of say, ah, yeah, that's the one I'm trying to get the heat, heat gene from. Um, nope. And it goes, it does its test, and I can then see what sort of heat genes it's produced from the uh, mutation. Uh, as I say, just chucking it into the... Uh, into the, the hydroponics bay and growing something and hoping it mutates heat. Nah, that's not going to happen. Uh, where are we? On there. Uh, so we can see the uh, heat um, temperature. Where is that? Ah, oh, top one. How would I find it up there? Uh, so this is the one we've got there. It is a little bit. But we have uh, this little doodad over here, which is our gene sta stabilizer or destabilizer. Um, so we can switch that on. We can. Uh, so we've got that to switch it on now. Right. So we have stabilizing or destabilizing. So we know what our genes are, and we can just select which gene we want to actually do. So if we want to get this one to um, uh, well, to grow faster, we're just going to try and mutate our great growth speed. We switch between them there. If we want to try and mutate our growth speed, 
I can just destabilize that. Switching to destabilizing. Um, push the button. It does its sciencey stuff. And uh, takes a little bit of time. And bingo, we have this thing here. Now this one should be uh, destabilized, and if I plant that, it should be much more likely to the, uh, have a change in the um, growth speed. Uh, so I can target specific things there. So if I want to target heat, I can destabilize the heat gene and then put it in a, into a torture chamber to try and grow it at a really hot temperature. And it has a more chance of actually changing the heat gene. So that's a, a way of sort of selecting, selectively mutating it. Because with all those things that we had in there, um, the chance for it to randomly mutate one of those things there is, uh, is, is just going to take forever. So uh, being able to selectively target there, it's, it's going to make it much easier to make some uh, some nasty plants here which will grow in horrible conditions. Uh, right, and we've probably seen there we've got the uh, we've got this little doodad here, which is our new tablet for looking at these things here. Currently, it doesn't seem to look at hydroponics devices. I'm not sure if that's Harvey causing that or whether it's just the device, um, but it won't look at them. I thought there was a patch note there that sort of said they'd fixed that, but uh, at the time of recording this, it's, it's still not quite working right. But uh, there you go. So we can look at that. We can see what the plant's doing there. Instead of having to uh, guess or wait till it's grown and see what's happening, uh, but it tells you all the information about the light efficiency, light intensity, uh, the stress it's receiving. Now the light in is a big thing now because uh, they've they've changed that so the plants do have to have their rest because um, if you don't give it to them, they don't grow. And it was much. Of, very much like a, a very accurate growth measure there is I did get my growth plant growth like in real life came down to pretty much zero it said this plant is not growing it will never fruit it will never reach seeds um, so uh, yeah the realism there has gone up and it's just like my real garden uh, but I've hooked up something there to figure it out and after a bit of trial and error I did find out that it was the lights there so I've got them switched off you got to switch them off for a time at night I have just put in a uh, a light sensor to so say at night time um, we'll just switch on the lights for a little while at night time and uh, see how we go um, so if we look at them there we can say that the light received is 81 uh, percent at its midday so it should get its hundred percent of its, its light up today we can switch the lights on during the day as well and it gets a bonus from the artificial light and the the, uh, the, 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 the sun thing um, so uh, you can do that, but if you give them, if you don't give them enough darkness each day, they stop growing. So uh, no more leaving your, your grow lights on 24/7. So um, yeah, you're going to have to uh, think it out. As I say, I've just put in a daylight sensor, and as the sun gets to night time, it just looks at the sun angle and decides when to switch it off. So uh, it switches them on for a couple of hours overnight, and that's it. The rest of the time they're off. And I'm getting pretty good growth rate out of that. So that's how I do my gardening now. Um, as I say, the Harveys are up and running, so we'll have to run through a coding sequence on them one day. And right, so but that's that. That's that one there. So I say, we've got, why don't you run all your tests? Even if the seeds do come out of here and stack into a machine, they still remember the names of everything there. So you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up if you stack them there. So you just pop them all out and they'll still have the original name saved. They still have all the original genetic data. And yeah. So once you've mutated them, you can go over this machine here. Uh, where um, I do have potatoes. I did prepare. There. Some potatoes. Uh Right, so if we look at them, yes, yeah, see they've all got different names in them there as I unstack them all. They know which devices they've come out of. And I've run out. So you keep track of them all there. You know which one's there. So if you've got all your heat genes in one and all your growth speed in the another one there, you'll know which ones are which. So then, of course, you can take a couple of these and you can put them into the gene splicer and switch ye on. Uh, then you can pick out which, uh, which which genes you want to take from one to the other. So 
So if I've got one which has very good growth speed and one that has very good heat tolerance, I can take the growth speed gene from one and put into the other one. So if I've got that set to growth speed, if I push this start button, it'll now take the growth speed gene out of that one, plop it into that one, and we'll have our two, two super potatoes joined together into one extra super potato. Uh, but they do have to be like plants, so you can't just take a, um, the growth speed from a potato and put it into a pumpkin. That doesn't work. Uh, so uh, that was the first thing I tried, but of course, um, uh, no, it doesn't happen. It does take a while to do. It's, um, well, it is splicing genetics, so I guess it's going to take out one atom at a time with its pokey thing and put it in the other one. Ooh, they're green. Can I pinch that? Ooh, I broke it. <laughs> uh, I'll just let it go there. Uh, right, so... So that's what we've got. So the genetics genetics has now become a lot easier to do, a lot quicker, um, because you can destabilize and then just pick the genes you want from the good ones out. So this tray here is a great thing there. I, I wondered how, well, I didn't even really think of that. So someone's ahead of the game on that one there. Uh, but that's the main thing we got out of that one. So let's say the Harvey's working again. We've got the tablets um, for looking at that one. And um, what else did we get? Um, and another really cool thing we got from this update is look, I can mine without instant horrible death on Venus. That is so cool. Ah, oh, that's just, you can't go with complete reckless abandon, but um, it's certainly a lot safer than what it was. Uh, let me just slow down the air pressure for a couple of, couple of game ticks. Uh, so you don't immediately get sucked and destroyed into a hole. Uh, so that is certainly a big improvement. Uh, so I can get back to back to mining and uh, not have to cheat things in. Although now I make holes everywhere. Um, uh, there we go. Never happened. Uh, well, I say we've got our new landing pads and the new update, but. Um, I'm still going to have a bit of a check with them, so I haven't done much on that one there. Uh, right, now I do find that my Venus base here is, uh, the growth growth rate is now har harming my, uh, my, my biomass production there. We do have the flowers still growing. Um, they do give me some biomass. It's not much, because they only harvest uh, two plants from each harvest, and... Um, I have to replant one of them, so uh, they're not doing me the best. So I've got to probably have to grab either a massive, massive amount of plants for, uh, for biomass. Because um, I have a, uh, these ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's uh, there, yeah, that's not enough. Uh, so even with them running on a batch system there, that's not generating enough. So um, I'm going to need a massive biomass far more. Uh, or, I don't know, the devs might have to put in a, a biomass dedicated plants. I mean, we've got the ferns for um, for uh, uh, dedicated oxygen plants. If we had a, a fodder or something like that that you can't eat, but it's just good for making biomass. You can sort of see the flowers here, how they all grow at different rates. They're all planted at the same time, yet this one has reached maturity first, and the other ones are still lagging across. So they don't have exactly the same, but you can still batch ride them. I mean, I've Still batch riding with the Harveys here. It's just that instead of reading one one of these pots and harvesting when they all all all, all reach maturity, I'm actually reading four of them. And that you generally generally gets all of them there. I occasionally miss one of them, um, but you can still use your batch batch writing on batch commands on those ones. You've just got to use a batch read on the pots as well. Um, so there we go. By the time this one, this one, and this one, this one, all the blue ones reach maturity, it should harvest, and all the red ones are already reached maturity, so I get a full set of biomass out of that one. But as I say, they are they only produce two plants, and um, I have to replant one of them, so I'm really only getting one yield of these each, each harvest cycle. But it is a pretty quick harvest cycle, but I'm still going to need a lot more of them to 
keep up with the hydrogen because I don't have much anymore. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's I think it's a battle from the update. Uh, as I say, the genetic sequences, uh, they are going to be really interesting. There's a few few things there. Um, I'm not sure if you can actually get plants to grow outside or whether the game just won't allow it, but um, it's something I'm going to find out. Uh, if I can get down to low enough pressure on Mars, or if I can get it down to cold enough that I can grow it on Europa, or hot enough for the other planets, uh, well, I guess we'll see. Somebody's probably already done it, so... If you have already done it, drop a message, let us know, because I'm curious to find out. Um, there we go. Another lot of biomass coming in. They were all harvested. Uh, if I can see it go through. Yeah, not many coming out of each of them. But oh well, next lot are in. Okay, but uh, I think that's about, I think I've covered everything. As I say, it was a very neat and targeted update. This one wasn't the, 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 the scatter of a heap of things there. So, um, uh, yeah, they've moved on to the uh, trade update there. So I think that's it for the farming update. We won't get a, won't get a farming update for maybe some balance, balance patches, but that's probably about it. But this is looking really cool now. It's a new mechanic. Um, I don't know if we can breed uh, monster killer, killer tomatoes. That would be interesting. Um, but anyway, uh, so it'll be interesting to see what we can make with that. So, till next time, happy building. See ya.